Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and in this video, I have several friends from Cava, which is in the Columbia area of Tennessee. And this is Dick Brickner. There's Barry Brown in the white bee suit, and that's Jody in the tan bee suit. We've also had a couple other folks come out and help out. And what we're doing today is research with different treatments and going against Varroa mites. So we have some data that we're collecting over here. Dick is uh, the brain trust over here, at least. Something. Somebody's got to be. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. That's right. <laughs> and uh, we've got all these hives that we're going through. A couple of them aren't making grade. The smaller nuke boxes, for example, and I came to a double deep, and one of them was completely queenless. So it's one of the things that I've learned recently when you're trying to maintain 52 colonies for research, it's, it's very difficult to keep them all even. They started out that way. We balanced them out. And here we are a few months removed, and there's some that are packed three deeps. There are some that are about eight frames strong. They're all over the place, and some have great queens, and some could use a requeen. So, so tell me what we've got to do, Richard. Well, it was very surprising, but our first colony over there sampled 33 mites, which uh, is pretty high. And so far out of 14, I think uh, four of them exceed the recommended uh, treatment level, but uh, everything's going to get treated eventually. So some of them don't look too bad. One had a zero count. We have, we have one zero count. Yeah. So it was June 4th and you guys were out here last time. Yes. And it only had three in that it one? It had three in it on that date, yes. So, so our theory, there's there two things, like why is that hive have so many? We think it's because it's on that corner over there and there's drift, which is one of the things affecting that as bees come back in, they don't always perfectly go back into their hive and so there could be more of a focal point. As you can see, that had four deep boxes on it. It was the largest colony in the yard and so there was definitely an influx of bees in there. But another factor is the queen is not laying super well. I've actually got her marked to re-queen because I don't think she's going to head up the colony the rest of the way through the season and go through winter successfully. So there's not as much brood. And because there's not as much brood, more mites are exposed. Some of these colonies have just slabs and bricks of brood, and they typically are the ones that have a lower count. And so the alcohol wash, well, we call it alcohol wash. Um, why don't you talk about what we're using today? Well, following uh, what Randy Oliver has published in the American Bee Journal, very simply, it's a gallon of water with a tablespoon of Dawn Ultra dishwashing liquid in there. Uh, consequently, it's about a 10 cent cost versus what you would pay for alcohol. Works very well. It seems to be getting the mites really, really good. And and then he rigged up this over here, which is, I've never seen anything like it. Why don't you explain that? Well, that's just a homemade tray I made out of five mesh screen. and. Uh, I dump all the bees in there, re-rinse and slosh real good to see if there is anything that I've missed. Occasionally I will find some more mites. How's this unit working for us? I it, think it's working very well. I was a little concerned because that thing goes almost all the way to the bottom. Yes, but we have not seen any problems, but I think the slots within the basket are a little larger than what we see in the easy check, so I think we are doing a very good job of washing with that new. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking that seal on it too. So that's a, a bonus. Well, we are gonna go check these guys out over here and oh my goodness, so I'll show you all this real quick. These bees are making a sacrifice for our education and a lot of people have a hard time doing these either Dawn washes or alcohol washes. However, you learn so much from them which colonies really need extra treatment, which ones don't need treatment. And 300 bees per sample is roughly what we take. And a good queen right now is still laying, I'd say around triple that every day. So it's really not a huge, huge deal. However, it's not very fun, but we're about 40% of the way through. We've gone through all these colonies right here and. As you can see, we are headed down this direction. Woo! The bees are not in a good mood today. It has been rainy, 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 and overcast. And we've been a little bit rough with them today because we've had to do all the washes. 
I like wearing gloves for this job right here because we're moving quickly and we're shaking a lot of bees and it just helps us be a lot faster and get stung less. All right, this one does not have a queen excluder, so whoo, there's a good bit of bees in this hive right here. There's a piece of wood over here that must have fell in last time I was fooling with the bees, and they have propolized that up real good. So let's see if we can find what we're going for. And what we're going for is a good frame of larvae, a good frame of pollen. We're going for nurse bees. They're going to have the highest concentration of varroa mites on them, and that we want that concentration. There's 10 frames to a box. Nice queen in here. Obviously, you can tell looking at how many bees are in this hive, somebody's doing a great job. So if you'll look down in here, you'll see that there's a lot of uncapped brood and we have some capped brood in the center we want to have a frame that has plenty of them at this stage that means they have to feed them and nurse bees are the ones that do that job now we need to look around and make sure that we don't have the queen i'm not seeing her right now feel pretty confident about that our goal is to wash no queens i've never seen a queen that i have washed However, now that I've said that and jinxed ourselves, we probably will do that today. I hope not. Especially a queen like this one right here. Another good frame to pull larvae, just starting to cap some of this brood. Good little pattern from this queen right here. I would say this colony needs about two gallons of one to one though. There's some weight in the boxes, but as much as they're brooding, as many bees there are in here, we need to feed them and keep this moving. So we're gonna shake those into that box. If it had a little bit more bees on each frame, I'd only shake one frame in there, but both of these are a little white. And you can see that there are bees flying out of here and that's okay those are forager bees we don't need those we want nurse bees and so i really like this tub right here you can get these from just walmart dollar tree those kind of places and you just this is a half cup just kind of shake it level and thank you barry He's going to take that over there to wash. Each colony has some tape on top of them letting us know which colony that they are. And that will be washed and we will see how that goes. And now we are just throwing everything back together. And of course, when we're not doing a video, we can be much faster than this. And just got to get these frames back together. Especially when you're using... 10 frames, it's always good to push them back together so they'll all fit. This hive right here then went through a requeen, the queen did not come back, so probably one of the reasons this colony is so strong is because some of the forager bees went over here as that other queen was expiring. And this colony just has a ton of bees. Good looking hive, but we gotta get those mite loads down. So let's come back over here. Excuse the tall grass in my yard. Any mites in that one? There are. Four. Well, that's four too many in my book, but when you're doing research, you kind of want to see a few mites, don't you? Yes, you do. So. He's going to go ahead and just run them through this neat little rig that he's got over here just to make sure that we don't miss any mites. I think I might have saw one, actually. <laughs> no, you don't see one. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> now, do they float or do they sink? I'm pretty sure they sink. Most sink. Once in a while, see, I'll find I, one. I, there's, there's one down in there. 
There's another one right down in there. Yes, that is. Sounds like the eagle eyes. That's the first wash in about 10 that I found some in here. So there's two additional mites there in addition to those four. Oh, we got a small hive beetle too. Another win. Okay. Actually, actually I wasn't 100% sure I saw a varroa <laughs> mite. I just saw some debris going around, but yeah. it kind of looked right. But this time of the year, you'll probably get one. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be using um, some oxalic acid extended release pads. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that, Richard? Yes, they are here. Oh, you brought uh, them with yeah. you. <laughs> I'm going to leave them with you. Fantastic. All right. These are the sweetie sponges. Now, I appreciate that you got plenty of collar diversity there. Well, that's the way we're ever going to change it. Yeah, this is a half of a sponge. So you put two pieces in on top of your deep with the brood. And uh, each towel has been impregnated with a mix of 50 grams of oxalic acid dissolved in 50 grams of glycerin. So would that be 25 per, per piece like that? Per half. Okay. Right. Per half. Yes. And so Randy Oliver has been having really good results with them. And thankfully we've got EPA exemption to be able to test these out. And other right. uh, places are starting to test them as well. And hopefully we'll get some really good data from Tennessee. Yes, we will. And uh, it's all about learning and pushing things forward. Um, it was Einstein that said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results? Correct. Well, we'd like to do different things because I'm not very happy with the current situation. Apivar hasn't been working for me very good for the, the last couple of years. Um, Apigard and formic acid have some really good advantages when the temperature is ideal, um, but they also are very disruptive on queens and, and brood during certain parts of the season where you may not want that. What if you're trying to requeen a colony? And I do this all the time where we're going into either big colonies or making splits. And when you drop a queen cell in there, you can't use apigard or formic acid during that time where it will, um, you'll completely lose that virgin queen. However, so a product like this, you can make that split, drop your queen cell and put oxalic acid extend release. And then you're chipping away at the mites very efficiently because as that queen's going out and mating, all of the brood is emerging out and there's a gap in the brood rearing. And that really makes the mites more vulnerable. But most products, unfortunately, mess up the queen rearing process. So that's kind of my hope for this long term is that all of my splits that I make, which we make quite a few, we can put something that's very affordable and effective and use that combined with a requeening process and make it even more efficient. Correct. So, pretty exciting. We're also going to be testing out some Apigard and another group. So, we have several things going on, but I just wanted to give you an all an update. And, Richard, I appreciate you coming out. And I'd shake, but I've got acid on my hand. Oh, you hand. got that, that hand okay. good. Okay. <laughs> Left handed oh, it shake. It washes off. That's, that's right. <laughs> Thanks right. for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>